met yesterday with the president in which you discussed and the president said you were meeting to discuss your strategies of how this bipartisan conversation is going to be like. What is that strategy? Well, really not a strategy, but uh, he was just briefing us. As I said yesterday, he was briefing us on what uh, is expected of us to work together with our colleagues in the minority and um, in both houses. That's why we are the leadership of both houses to develop a framework where we will quickly roll out on that bipartisan uh, approach to resolving the issues that have been raised. And uh, as you are aware, there is his proposal. There is also the counter proposal from the minority. And therefore, we uh, must have some sort of framework on how you uh, deal with the issues. Mm. Um, uh, get to know, uh, see what is doable, what is uh, not doable under the current laws. If there are any changes that you need to make to any laws, then uh, you look into it. And uh, as happens ordinarily, uh, and I did indicate that yesterday, Parliament has its own rules and procedures and way of doing things. And therefore, uh, what would ordinarily happen is to have uh, an ad hoc select committee because there are some issues that you not have a standing committee to uh, deal with. And uh, it's been done in the past through select committees, ad hoc select committees, and I probably would be thinking that is the route we will take, mm -hmm. establish an ad hoc or ad hoc committees mm -hmm. to deal with each of the issues or one committee that can deal with the issues that are there. Mm -hmm. And uh, when that time comes, then we will we'll just uh, get to nominate members. And uh, with the approval of the House, uh, they begin their work. Mm -hmm. So the issues you're saying, include the issues that the president himself had raised. That's with the memorandum to the speakers. And then the issues that Azimio has been raising uh, in the protests. Those are very many issues. The issues the president had raised in uh, his memorandum to the House are already in, in before an ad hoc select committee, mm -hmm. uh, which has already begun its work. Uh, the National Assembly did nominate a committee and uh, the Senate also did and that committee already has begun its work. Mm -hmm. they, I think they've held two meetings now, either two or three meetings. Um, so th that's already uh, work that's ongoing. Mm -hmm. The other issue is now the one the president raised on uh, the constitution of IEBC, the panel. Uh, you remember that panel was uh, established following an amendment to the IEBC Amendment Act. Uh, following a court ruling, uh, and I don't know if it's Wanjiro who went to court. Not on that one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> missed that else? one. <laughs> yes, I, I don't know how Wanjiro one. missed that one. Imagine. <laughs> Must be Omtata or someone else. <laughs> so somebody went to court uh, when this act was uh, enacted uh, last year, but one. Mm -hmm. With the argument that the Parliamentary Service Commission cannot rightfully nominate four nominees out of the seven. And the court agreed with them and uh, uh, say the particular clause that uh, gave the Parliamentary Service Commission for panelists was unconstitutional. And therefore what we did in this 13th parliament was basically to just amend the act uh, to reduce the number of nominees that were being nominated by the Parliamentary Service Commission to two and gave one position to the political parties liaison committee and one to the public service uh, commission. And uh, when that was uh, uh, passed in Parliament, the uh, President ascended into law. And that is a process that the panel you see working now has uh, been following. Therefore, if there is to be a review of that panel, uh, or rather the reconstitution of that panel, then uh, you may need to, uh, you have actually to amend the law. Uh, so, depending on what uh, the minority side wants and uh, what other Kenyans may express uh, their views to parliament that they may want. Uh, but remember, a large proportion of Kenyans had expressed their views mm -hmm. when we asked for public participation. And uh, that's how the law came to be enacted. Moshimua, well, there's what the president suggested, there's what he said, and then there's also the stance that was taken prior to that, things have changed in the last 24 to 48 hours, clearly. Is this new move, some of the things that you mentioned, of course, were already in play, as you've mentioned here, in terms of the act, but there's a general different feeling, different climate over the last 48, 24 hours. 
Is this new move welcome? You can speak as yourself, who's spoken over the last one week in different arena, as well as other players now in the house. Is it a welcome move? Of course. Hmm. And I did indicate yesterday it's a very welcome move, uh, especially considering that it's gotten people out of the streets. And uh, for many of us, remember, it had been our position that there are avenues where you should engage ordinarily. Mm -hmm. And as leaders, we should engage on matters that are of concern to the people that we represent in parliament. And uh, the fact that uh, there's been a climb down and people have uh, now agreed that we can sit together and resolve the issues that may be of concern to Kenyans, including the cost of living. And uh, I've even argued it on the floor of the mm -hmm. house mm -hmm. uh, that even for our colleagues on the other side, the place uh, for them to uh, deal with issues on the cost of living is not in the streets. Mm -hmm. It's on the floor of parliament. Mm -hmm. That is where if you have a problem with the cost of uh, commodities because as a result of taxation, then you can raise those issues, but you cannot deal with taxation issues in the streets. Mm -hmm. That is where if you have issues that have concerned to you in terms of uh, the subsidies uh, program that we have under the, uh, the current regime in subsidizing production instead of pro uh, subsidizing consumption, uh, the place to calm debate and give better ideas to uh, the government of the day is parliament, not mm -hmm. in the streets. Mm -hmm. And therefore it's a, a welcome thing that uh, people now have uh, stepped down to deal with issues where they should be dealt with. Honorable Ishungwa, we, yes, we've discussed and been on the same side on issues of the economy, uh, especially the mismanagement of the economy under the Jubilee administration. Mm -hmm. uh, some of those bad habits seem to be continuing under the Kenya Kwanzaa, but that's not what we are discussing today. If My you can name one, I would want to hear. Yes, like, um, well, the office of the president has been, has shot its, its budget, um, you know, within seven months, it had exhausted its budget, it's bloated it. Um, it's not a very transparent budget. Um, then the appointments that we are seeing of excess numbers at a time when we're in fiscal, con you know, we're in, in austerity. But let's not get sidetracked. I think there is <laughs> cause for, if you have time, maybe we can discuss the economic. My question is, we have a political issue here. And... Um, the legislative process in Parliament is, is perceived as somewhat captured. Uh, when we've had public participation and we've raised this issue with you, it's an issue that's also gone to court, where the public participation process in Parliament becomes almost a tick-the-box exercise, mm -hmm. where the public are invited, they give their views, but then the political politicians settle the matter based on what they've already determined. Now, how do we deal with a political problem like we have now because there is a political problem there's a pro problem of cost of living there's a problem around our elections and the credibility and uh, of our elections you're then talking about using a parliamentary process to deal with a political problem where the citizens don't have proper voice citizens are not assured they'll be heard is this really going to deal uh, diffuse the temperatures in the country? Is this really going to build uh, the nationhood and the support that Kenya Kwanzaa administration needs to implement its agenda? Mm. Or is that, is, are you proposing we go back to a business as usual approach? Or are you going to deal with the crisis that's facing the country? Well, Anjiro, you know, first I never let anything pass. And uh, when you talk of a bloated uh, expense, uh, expenditure in the office of president, mm -hmm. Probably you would see it that way from where you see it, but I can tell you from where I see it and having gone through the figures, and I'm sure you may also have had the opportunity to go look uh, through the figures, you should be aware that uh, the uh, last regime did expend the entire budget <laughs> for the year. Of before, the OP? Before of the office of the president. In yes. what? In two months? Between July in, and in, September? Within, within the first quarter. They expended up to money for up to the third quarter, beginning of the third quarter, for some strange reason. Between July and September? Yes. Mm -hmm. And part of it even <laughs> paid under Article 223, and those are the issues we've uh, had uh, discussions with Wanjiro Kikonyo in the past on. Therefore, when, when such a thing happens, then 
uh, and a new administration is coming, you are bound then to just to have to increase the budget because you the government has to, to buy run. the new cars that are needed, and you know these are some of the essential <laughs> do, expenditures do you know, we are seeing. Do you know, Angelo, how many cars uh, left that office? Do you many uh, know how many cars? And probably this is not something that I should be engaging in the media because mm -hmm. there, there are steps being taken. Uh, cars that uh, left with people. Cars that were being used by people who are not entitled to government cars. And you know the impunity that was there in this country. Uh, and those are some of the issues we've been raising. And uh, I will never shy away from raising those issues because they are there. Um, and we can never speak about issues that are not there. Mm. Okay, um, that's a big one. But now address the other question. The, 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 question, mm. the question of whether the process will deal with just the political issues. And give citizens a voice. And uh, whether citizens will have a voice. I think citizens always have a voice. And again, from where I see to Anjiro, and uh, I have engaged with you before when I was a chairman budget. And it is also not true that uh, the public participation is superficial. There are instances where parliament has even had to change legislation and at times even subsidiary legislation out of the engagements with members of the public. When I was a chair of budget and appropriations committee, I've had to reallocate resources uh, based on what we found on the ground um, when we went out uh, for public participation. And I'll give the case example of the MES program. Uh, the, the managed equipment services, uh, medical equipment services uh, program. The issues that came out even of the audits of that program came out of the public participation exercise. It is when we went to places like Kapenguri and you go and find theater equipment that is, was dumped there two, three years, not being used, but it's being paid for. You go and find other hospitals where dialysis equipment was put, the water, we are told they need soft water, the water there is hard. Some other places, there are no transformers for three-phase power, so the equipment is there. But Kenyans are paying for them. Yes. Uh, and that is what gave rise to even the issues that came to be raised by the auditor when we questioned that. Therefore, I not fully agree with you that the process in parliament is usually superficial in terms of public participation. We make effort to see to it that uh, the views of the public count. And even in this process, uh, Anjiro, I want to assure you that the public interest must and should override everything else. The political interest is heavy because it is a politician's driven process. And even where you saw people participating in terms of the demonstrations and picketing, it's simply because we're being led by politicians. And maybe that is where people in the civil society have failed. We should see a lot more of you people in the civil society being the ones leading the people-centric issues mm. rather than leaving it to the politicians. Because the politician will carry an agenda and hide behind the cost of living. Mm. Uh, but the real interest of the politician may not be the cost of living. Therefore, uh, maybe I'll throw it back to you uh, to challenge you in the civil society. And I have drawn parallels. Uh, I think a week or two ago, I drew parallels between what happened about a month ago. You remember when the traders in downtown Nyamakema River Road uh, were protesting and they uh, held a demonstration in the CBD right from downtown all the way to Harambe Avenue and onto the gate of the Senate in Parliament, not a single stone was thrown. Not a single person was arrested for misbehaving. And they had a very legitimate memoranda to present to the office of the president, which they did present. They presented another one to the office of the deputy president, and they presented the third one to the Parliament. Mm. And the week after, the deputy president uh, convened a meeting with their representatives and all agencies of government that had to deal with the issues that were raised in those memorandums. Therefore, we also as a country need to up our game. And maybe uh, uh, I would agree with you to an extent that this should not be left to politicians. Mm. It should, as it a should have other people. So it the question have then other is... players who do not have a political interest. Right. Okay, 